It was a brutal, scrappy night of football. The best team in the world, FC Barcelona, was playing Chelsea in the second leg of the 2012 Champions League semifinals. One of these teams will move on to the finals, the other will go home. One moment is about to seal the fate of this match, and even more importantly, redefine the career of one player who has suffered through the highest highs and lowest lows that football has to offer. This match is about to become a theater for one man, as we bear witness to the redemption of Fernando Torres. Fernando Torres' interest in the world of football began because of the anime Captain Tsubasa. Torres remembers watching the show as a young boy and enjoying the story of the two brothers who became footballers and worked their way up from a youth team all the way to the Japanese national team. Inspired by this story, Torres' footballing journey began in the youth leagues of Spain. From a young age, Torres was a very talented player, and this was enough to impress some of the professional scouts, including being selected to try out for the Atletico Madrid club system. This was a team that Fernando Torres grew up supporting after being introduced by his grandfather and his love for the team. After a successful tryout, Torres joined the Atletico Madrid club system and began to work even harder, training daily, studying the sport, and traveling to games in the far reaches of the Spanish countryside. At 14, he was chosen as the best player in Spain for his age group, and at 15, he signed his first professional footballing contract with Atletico. Within two years, he made his professional football debut, and just a week later, he scored his first professional goal at just 17 years old. Over the next six seasons, as an Atletico Madrid player, Torres proved himself a critical part of the team, consistently finishing as one of La Liga's top scorers and even being named captain of the club. But as with any promising young footballing talent, bigger clubs began to take notice and indicate their interest at signing Torres away from Atletico. So unsurprisingly, in 2007, Liverpool signed Torres for a then club record fee of 20 million pounds. And now in the more intense Premier League, Torres continued his rise to the top of the footballing world. These next years of Liverpool saw a lot of success for Torres and the club. For Fernando Torres, it included multiple PFA Team of the Year appearances, 65 goals in 102 appearances, and even being voted in third place in the Ballon d'Or voting, just behind Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Pretty decent competition, if you ask me. At Liverpool, Torres had blossomed from a talented young player to one of the best players in the entire world. However, his years at Liverpool also featured multiple injuries that would begin to plague his career. First, multiple different hamstring tears sidelined him for weeks, and then a meniscus tear in his knee forced him to undergo surgery as he rushed to try and be fit for the 2010 World Cup. Then following Spain's eventual victory in the World Cup, where Torres really didn't play a whole lot, Liverpool began to experience a lot of shakeups as a club. Roy Hodgson replaced Rafael Benitez as coach, club ownership changed hands, and through it all, Torres was feeling cast aside and just not part of the future of the club. So, in January 2011, he put in an official transfer request. He wanted to leave, and knocking at the door came rival English club Chelsea. The Blues swiftly signed Torres for an at-the-time British record of £50 million, making Torres one of the most expensive transfers in history. So as he traveled from Liverpool to his new home in London, expectations and hopes were sky high. Torres' first appearance for Chelsea came in a 1-0 defeat to the club he had just left, Liverpool, in a debut where he disappointingly failed to score. No worries, just bounce back the next game. In the next game against Fulham, another goalless performance for Torres. And then another one in a win against Manchester United. And another in a win against Blackpool. Suddenly, 14 games had passed and Torres still hadn't found the back of the net. This shocking drought was met with the ire of Chelsea supporters and the taunts of Liverpool supporters as they saw this poor form as some kind of karmic payment for leaving the club as hastily as he did. It became such a notable drought that someone even made a website called Has Fernando Torres Scored for Chelsea.com with the sole purpose of tracking how long it's been. 
Torres, however, remained professional and focused, keeping his head up and believing that the goals will soon come. Finally, on a cold night in Stamford Bridge, after coming off the bench, Torres was able to make it happen, scoring late into the game against West Ham, and he celebrated with his teammates in a mix of elation and relief. Unfortunately, this goal would not open the floodgates. He went the next four games again without scoring and finished his first season in a Chelsea kit with only the one goal to his name. The start of the 2011-2012 season brought much of the same. While he was able to notch four goals by the middle of October, it just looked like his confidence was shot. Maybe it was nagging injuries, maybe it was just overthinking, but the poise and accuracy he played with throughout his time at Atletico and Liverpool was gone, replaced instead with nervous touches. In October, Torres began another astounding goal drought. It truly seemed like nothing could go his way. He hit the post, had goals disallowed, and gave us a miss against Manchester United that would come to haunt his career. After deftly dribbling around the keeper, Torres looked up to an open goal and still somehow slotted it wide. Instantly, this moment was replayed again and again throughout the footballing world as many could not believe what had become of the once top three player in the entire world. A staggering 24 games passed, and still, Torres was scoreless. Eventually, in an FA Cup tie against Leicester City, Torres was again able to break his drought. However, it really was too little too late. Two separate, long, dry spells of goals had turned even the most hopeful of Chelsea fans into non-believers. Anytime there is a big ticket and high-profile transfer like Torres, the expectations are going to be high. But unfortunately, Fernando Torres had seemingly turned into a shell of his former self, and in doing so, had completely let Chelsea down. Their 50 million pound man was officially a flop. During Torres' run of bad appearances, the weight of the goal scoring had fallen onto Chelsea's other striker, the aging but still excellent player from the Ivory Coast, Didier Drogba. This was Drogba's ninth season as a Blue, and in his tenure with the club, he had helped lead Chelsea to their first league title in 50 years back in 2005. He was already a certified Chelsea legend, but there is one trophy that he and the club still had not won, and that was the Champions League. In club football, the Champions League is the most prestigious title. It's a competition comprised of all the best teams from across the European leagues. The competition is fierce, and winning the Champions League means footballing immortality. And in this year's Champions League, Chelsea were making a run. The bracket started against Napoli, where they were able to fend off the Italians in extra time of the second leg after a Bronislav Ivanovic goal sent them through with a score across both legs of 5-4. In the quarterfinals, they drew top Portuguese team Benfica, and Chelsea again came away with a victory, beating them with a score of 3-1 on aggregate, in a series where Torres, again, did not score. And waiting for Chelsea in the semifinals was the reigning holders of the Champions League, and the team that most considered to be the best in the world, FC Barcelona. Barcelona was also the team that broke Chelsea's heart in the Champions League just three years ago, after a late Andres Iniesta winner put Barcelona through to the finals after a series of questionable refereeing decisions kept Barcelona in the game. Chelsea players and fans alike desperately wanted revenge against the Spanish club, but 2012 Barcelona boasted one of the best teams that we've ever seen. It included the 2010 World Cup winning midfield trio of Xavi, Sergio Busquets, and the aforementioned Andres Iniesta, Alexis Sanchez at forward, and of course, the greatest player to ever grace a footballing pitch in Lionel Messi. At every position, Chelsea seemed outmatched. The bookmakers going into the first leg of the tie gave Chelsea slim odds to even win one game. And even for their game at home in London, they only had about 20% odds to win. To beat this Barcelona team across two legs on aggregate, well, it would take a miracle. Torres did not play in the first leg of the tie. From the start, Barcelona commanded the game with their signature play style of keeping possession and controlling the ball. Shots rained at the Chelsea goal, with Alexis Sanchez hitting the crossbar. But even though they had full control, no Barcelona goal came. In the dying minutes of the first half, 
Chelsea actually broke through after Didier Drogba slotted the ball into the net for a 1-0 Chelsea lead. The second half was much of the same with Barcelona dominating, but never scoring. And with another Barcelona shot hitting the post as the game expired, Chelsea won 1-0, despite only having a minuscule 28% possession. The next week, nursing their slight lead in the double-legged tie, Chelsea traveled to Barcelona with their hopes alive of somehow pulling this off. The game kicked off and again Torres was not playing, and again, the game was all Barca. They ran at the Chelsea goal again and again. Then things took a turn for the worse when Chelsea center back Gary Cahill suffered an injury that forced him to be subbed off just 10 minutes in. After this, it's really hard to overstate how many chances Barcelona had, until they finally broke through in the 35th minute after a Dani Alves run and pass set up an easy assist for Busquets. Immediately after, Chelsea captain and key defender John Terry was given a red card for an ill-advised kick on Sanchez. And just like that, Chelsea were down to 10 men. And the woes for the Blues just kept piling on as Messi found Andres Iniesta to make it 2-0 on the night and 2-1 on aggregate. Down to just 10 men against the already dominant and now winning Barcelona, it was looking dire. Then a spark hit. Chelsea midfielder Ramirez got the ball deep in their own half and passed it to Frank Lampard. The veteran midfielder took two touches to wait for the run and then played a perfect pass upfield to Ramirez who hadn't stopped running. On his first touch, the Brazilian hit a perfect chip shot right over the goalkeeper and into the net. It was a shock to Barcelona. The stadium became quiet as they saw 45 minutes of pure domination only lead to a 2-2 score on aggregate over a 10-man Chelsea team. Not what they were expecting to see as the teams exited the field to halftime. But this Barcelona team was not to be deterred. Upon returning in the second half, Barcelona attacked Chelsea and quickly earned a penalty shot. Up stepped Lionel Messi, the best player in the world. And he hit the penalty high into the crossbar as Barcelona was again somehow denied a goal. As Chelsea desperately protected their goal, things got more and more physical. Lampard earned a yellow card after a rough challenge and bodies were flying as Barcelona was getting desperate. In the 79th minute of the 90, the sign flashed for Drogba to be subbed off. Replacing him from the bench was, of course, Fernando Torres. Could this be his moment? I wonder. The game kept moving at a fever pitch. Barcelona had a goal disallowed for offside, and the Chelsea goalkeeper kept making saves to keep the ball out of his goal. Something about this Chelsea team just kept Barcelona from scoring. Then, in the final minute of the game, Barcelona sent their whole team upfield in a final attack. The ball ricocheted in the Chelsea box and was then cleared way downfield. As the camera panned over, we saw that the ball had landed at the feet of Fernando Torres and there was nothing standing between him and the goalkeeper. Barcelona defenders rushed back to stop him, but they were way too far behind. It was only about Torres. Fernando Torres had gone through a tumultuous career. From humble beginnings, falling in love with the sport of football and joining the Atletico Madrid club system, to starting for the Atletico professional team as a teenager, to hitting his stride in Liverpool and becoming one of the world's best players, to then years of injuries and bad form and games after games of frustration at Chelsea as fans declared him an expensive failure. Torres kept his composure and dribbled around the Barcelona goalkeeper in a mirror image of the infamous miss against Manchester United that made him the disgrace of the footballing world. All he had to do was hit into the now empty net. Chelsea fans around the world celebrated in elation and his teammates swarmed him as victory over Barcelona was now assured. The best team in the world, the defending champions, the team that dominated every minute of the game that was playing 11 men against a 10-man team was just beat and Chelsea got their revenge for 2009's heartbreak. If this was a storybook, perhaps you might expect Torres to go on to score a dramatic winner in the Champions League finals. That's not what happened. Chelsea did in fact go on to win their first Champions League, earning a victory over Bayern Munich off the back of heroics from Chelsea's actual starting striker, Didier Drogba. Torres barely even played in the final. In fact, as you may have already realized, Torres' goal against Barcelona in the semifinals wasn't even necessary. 
Because of the away goals rule in the Champions League, Ramirez's goal earlier in the game was the one that actually put Chelsea ahead on aggregate. Torres' goal was just a nail in the coffin. But even though Chelsea didn't technically need this goal, Fernando Torres did. Since joining Chelsea, Torres and his poor performances seemed destined for a career of what-ifs, relegated to the bench to watch his teammates succeed. Yet in one moment, when the ball fell to him, and he was able to seal one of the greatest upsets in Champions League history with just one goal, all the pain of the past years melted away. And in this one moment, in front of millions, Torres could celebrate with full relief and joy. A couple of years after this game, Torres moved back home to join Atletico Madrid for a few years before playing his final year of his career in Japan for club Sagandosu, perhaps fulfilling a boyhood dream that was inspired by the years growing up watching the anime Captain Tsubasa. Nowadays, Torres is back in Madrid, coaching the Atletico Madrid reserve team in the Spanish second division. As we look back on Fernando Torres' playing career, this goal against Barcelona is perhaps what we remember him most for. Not the highs of his time in Atletico or Liverpool, not when he was voted as the third best player in the world, not even winning the World Cup with Spain. We remember when Torres cast off the years of frustration, of failure, of personal defeat, and sent Chelsea into the Champions League final. In doing so, he earned himself redemption. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and hope you enjoyed. If you did, you should subscribe right here on YouTube for more content like it. If you enjoyed this video about football, you should go check out the other one that I created. That is a breakdown of the penalty shot and uses game theory to examine where is best in the goal to shoot to maximize your chances of scoring. It was an interesting breakdown and you should go check it out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey, mister. <laughs> Got a squirrel friend.